Hello world! Today I've been harvesting gunpowder from my gunpowder farm and I've noticed a bit of a problem. Something has changed in the spawn mechanic around my base. I believe I've lit up too many underground tunnels or something. All the spiders are now spawning inside of this machine and they're clogging it up badly. I'm no longer getting gunpowder out of it. Well, there was a little bit of gunpowder, but not nearly enough. I'm spending too much time AFKing on this gunpowder farm and not enough time working on other projects. So, it's time for us to say goodbye to the gunpowder farm and build a new one. I have very strict rules. I'm a lot like Vegas. I don't keep things just because they're neat and old and vintage. I keep things because they're useful. So just because something's historic and have been on the channel for a while, it doesn't have staying power. This giant oil rig has got to come down. Before I start demolition, I do give it one more chance. I give it a few minutes of AFKing while I use the bathroom, and I actually time it out, and it only produced 64 and 10 gunpowder. Uh, that's not nearly enough. I would be producing dynamite at a much faster rate if I just got rid of the farm altogether and hunted creepers down manually. So, we have to build a new farm, and rather than outfitting this one to be functional and working, I should just start from the ground up. Before I start from the ground up, I'll be starting by taking this thing down from the top down. There's a lightning rod on the tippy top of this thing. It is made of wood, after all, and that's non-burnable, so I'm going to take that down with a pickaxe. I've decided I'm not going to salvage any of the wood from this project. It'd be too much work to tear it down manually. I think what I'll do is I'll just burn it down and then get rid of the water with buckets and so on and so forth until the entire thing is gone. In order to make it lightning proof, I covered the entire top in mud brick half slabs in the hopes that fire would not be able to manifest here. Even if it hit the hay bales, it wouldn't spread far. I also put that lightning rod on top as soon as I got copper. All of this will need to be taken off manually. The hay bales will be recycled into thatchet roofing for other projects. I don't know what projects require thatchet roofing, but I know they're not here. Next to be removed are the pumpkins. I will likely not use these in any other projects. Although they provide light, seed lanterns are just the superior form, so these will likely just be thrown into lava. It's time. I start the fire at the tip top. I then climb down the ladder and continue spreading the fire as I go. This is a mending flint and steel, so I'll fix it later at the new mob farm when I build it. For now, it'll be burning down the old one. I will say I'm a little bit sad to see the oil rig go. A tiny bit. You see, normally when I'm playing Minecraft, it's not for anybody, and I'm not expecting anyone to watch it, so I just play for myself, and I usually don't build gigantic things like this. This is something I only did because I have the YouTube channel now, and I'm trying to push my boundaries and limits, but I can't let myself say that this thing is the pinnacle of perfection, or the farthest I can build, or the best I can do. I've got to move on and build bigger and better things, and that means watching something like this go up in flames. Well, a couple of sponge blocks later, and the whole thing is gone, burned all to the ground. I didn't save very much of the wood, maybe a couple blocks here and there, but for the most part, it all ended up scrapped. Well, and that's the end. If you have any words you'd like to say about the old oil rig, I'd suggest you type them in the comments below. This will be the last episode in which it appears, because it is gone. Moving on to the next project, looks like. I've been thinking it might be nice to have a walking connection between here and the underside of the Technoblade monument. It hasn't been drained out yet, I don't plan on doing that for a while, but it would be nice to at least walk over to the structure. This is not going to be part of today's project, it's just something I want to get done now, rather than later. You can't hear it, but I'm currently on YouTube looking up all kinds of mob theories and things about spawning conditions, I'm trying to create the perfect mob farm that hopefully will not jam up with spiders and will kill every mob guaranteed without any sort of problems. I don't mind if it's big and I don't mind if it's like the super most efficient farm, I just want it to not jam up anymore. While I'm building that little tunnel, I also go ahead and start farming some trees. I'm not actually after the trees themselves or the wood. I'm using a fortune hoe and seeing if I can get more apples when I break the leaves with a fortune hoe. I'm trying to build up a large stock of apples, and that means there's going to be a lot of wood. I've plopped a bed down. I'm way too far away from my actual bed to use that to switch it to day and night all the time, so I'm just putting a bed nearby. 
this tunnel is complete over to the Technoblade monument, and I'd like to use that space for something Technoblade-y. It only seems right. I won't use it for personal gain. So instead, I'm going to build my mob farm over this way using the same design of tunnel, except maybe one block wider. Essentially, all I'm doing is building a tube underwater, and I can always swim back through the tube to get air again, so it's really not that big a deal. Though building underwater can be a pain in the butt, I might want to build a conduit soon. Though I might save that for where the spawner actually is. Right now, I'm just trying to get distance between me and the guardian farm. Did I also mention I have a new pickaxe? This one is a silk touch, which is awesome. I now have a silk touch axe, a silk touch pickaxe, a silk touch uh, hoe, and I have fortune variants of the pickaxe and hoe, as long with a looting sword. I have some pretty good equipment, and it's been helping me out a ton. I'm not the only one working hard. My LAs are going through all the trees and finding all the little apples that pop off the leaves. They are doing a wonderful job and deserve a lot of praise. Oop, that one actually picked one up for me. Yay! In the midst of trying to acquire an apple, I also acquired a beehive. And luckily, I have a silk touch axe, so I don't even need to worry about fire or nothing. The bees are inside the hive, and I can transplant them into any new home of my choosing. Between my silk touch pickaxe and utilizing the same conduit from the guardian farm, it didn't take me very long at all to assemble a little bit of a structure out here. Now I've just got to remove all the water, and even though I have a conduit, it's still going to take me a lot of time. I live on an island in the middle of the ocean. I think we all know the drill by this point. Put down sand, then put down doors, then put down sand, then put down doors, and then eventually when I'm done, I'm going to use sponge blocks to divide out the water. Uh, this is a long process, but I'm used to doing it at this point. Do not worry, average YouTube watcher. I will not force you to watch me empty out this entire thing of all of its fluids. But I could, so do not test my power. I don't know if anyone cares, but I might as well say it. One way you can make an infinite water source is by allowing a sponge block to get wet without actually consuming a water source block. Then stick it in a furnace with a bucket, and it will produce a water bucket. Isn't that neat? Alrighty, let's work on getting this place leveled out and looking like something I can actually build in. Let's get rid of all this gravel. You know, I have a ton of gravel, and I wonder if there's anything I can do with it. I mean, I have chests full of gravel, but I haven't done anything with it other than just mill flint. I'm going to have to look up and see what kind of crafting recipes I have that involve gravel. Prismarine is my most inexpensive block, so I'm using it to line the pathways and make the place look kind of roomy and homey and, you know, like something you'd want to visit. I do, I'm not 100% happy with the color of Prismarine, but I'm going to try to work with it from now on because it's such a cheap block to produce. Also, did I mention I made this place a lot taller off-screen? This thing is jetting out of the water. It'll be an impressive mob farm, I'm hoping. I just realized that if my wish comes true, this is going to be a hyper-efficient mob farm, and any accident could cause this place to produce hundreds of mobs that are just stockpiled down here. So I'm going to line the floor with waterlogged slabs. That will make them creeper-proof, and I'll lose less if a creeper should suddenly detonate within the chamber. All these squares form a circle. All these squares form a circle. All these squares form a circle. All of these chests I plan on waterlogging, except for the two in the back, those can just be normal old chests. But they'll be fed by a hopper system, and since they're waterlogged, even if a creeper detonates, they won't be able to destroy the items inside the chest. I've been saving up a lot of iron, and I'll be using it here to build a super sorting system. I have no idea how many pieces of armor and equipment are going to be produced by this mob farm, and I would like it at all to be saved in these chests. I don't know if I'll ever use it, but it might be good to buff off some XP real quick. Oh yes, and while this was all going on, I was continuing to apple farm. I'm all done for now. I actually have a large number of apples saved up, and a lot of wood. I have no idea what I'm going to do with all this. It is now time for an episode of Tips with Timber. Today's episode will be about hoppers. Some of you Minecraft veterans will already know most of the things about hoppers they can dispense an item into whatever block you attach the hopper to, but they will also remove items from whatever block is above it, including other hoppers. This is what allows me to make this super sorting system super effective. 
In addition, hoppers can pull items through solid blocks, so long as that block is not a full block. So these campfires will allow items right through them. And since they're soul campfires, they'll do quite a bit more damage. Well, I'd say it's been about five hours since you saw the last clip, and I'm a little frustrated. All of my video recording footage between now and then ended up all blocky and weird, I, and I couldn't salvage it, which really frustrates me because I did a lot. As you can see, there's two conduits sitting on each side of the killing chamber. Mobs fall into the killing chamber, and these conduits make certain that all the mobs are taking damage, even if they're not where I can hit them, and the campfires can't do damage. This basically is my anti-jam system. It's basically a huge reset. Rather than fix the system and make it work properly, I just have a huge reset button in the form of these two conduits. So any spiders that get stuck will likely get killed by the conduits before they ever reach the kill chamber. So, the mob farm is almost done. There are some adjustments to be made, but it's already producing a large number of mobs that are falling down. And I gotta say, I am loving it. It's producing gunpowder at a much, much greater rate. And along with gunpowder, it's producing other loot, like rotten flesh, ender pearls, spider eyes, and all sorts of things. So I'm very happy with it. I should also mention, it's producing armor, enchanted swords, arrows, and other things that normally I don't get my hands on because, well, let's face it, mobs don't really spawn on my island. So, hopefully I can build up a large number of these materials over time. I'm going to keep working on this thing and adjusting it off-screen, but for now, I think I'm all done building the new mob farm. I'll have to give you a tour of it in spectator mode, because I could not salvage the blocky footage of me building the darn thing. Okay, I've adjusted a few things and made a couple of changes here and there, so let's give you a proper tour. First, of course, you have to walk away from the Guardian Farm. If we're too close to the Guardian Farm, they're going to fight over who can spawn what. And this thing is just perfectly positioned so that no Guardians spawn while you're visiting this, but Guardians do spawn if you're in between them, so you can actually get both farms to work at once. Of course, the two conduits are clearing out spiders and other hard-to-kill mobs that might be stuck or just refusing to fall down. This allows the system to be efficient, but I don't have to constantly f fiddle with it try and get it to work. I haven't waterlogged the chests yet, I really should do that, but eh, I can wait till another day. All of the loot is typically enchanted armor, pieces of gold boots and stuff, a lot of gunpowder, a lot of rotten flesh. A lot of useful items that I used to have to pay for, craft, or obtain through other ways are now produced for free by this farm. I replaced the magma blocks with tinted glass because the magma blocks were useless at stopping spiders from crawling up. I'll just leave it to the conduits. And of course we have the kill chamber, where soul sand fires are constantly doing damage. You gotta be quick. If you can whack them with a looting sword before they can die, they'll drop a higher yield of loot when they finally do die. That skeleton likely dropped that enchanted bow he was holding. I don't know if you saw that. It's probably hard to see because it's dark in here, but I'll explain it. Down in the middle, of course, we have the killing chamber. We have water flowing all of the creatures to the center so they can't cling on to anything. And we have two types of spawning platforms. The ones here in the middle are mostly for spiders. They're big enough to allow spiders to spawn. Most of them are squished together to prevent other mobs, but they can spawn things like skeletons and all the ones surrounding along the edges are just for producing things like skeletons, creepers, and the like. And as you can see, there's a lot of surface area and a lot of wasted space for air blocks. My goal is to not allow anything to get stuck. I don't even mind if we produce that many creatures. I would much rather not allow another jam up. I've come to realize that any sort of jam up, even even a small one inside of an AFK farm can completely negate whatever kind of efficiency you thought the farm had. It's better to have a bad farm that never gets jammed than a good farm that always gets jammed. A small update while I'm going ahead and doing the voice over, I added this creeper proofing because, yep, the creepers definitely blow up while you're trying to kill them sometimes. This is a quick update I'm doing just in voiceover. I found a second beehive, and I've added them into this little enclosure. This is the best way I can keep them from flying north. That one glitch is still there, so eventually I'll make a proper bee farm, but 
I really don't need that many honey blocks, they're just for like sugar and denying poison damage. So I think I'll just keep the bee farm something quaint and small for now. Uh, another update I'd like to inform you of is while recording that last update about the bees, I found a bottle of instant health inside the farm system. Somehow, witches drop their bottles of instant health when they're trying to heal inside of this machine. That is very awesome. I'll bet you're wondering why I'm kidnapping a villager from my village. Well, the reason is he doesn't have a job, and I have a lot of apples, so I'm going to be taking him to the nether for a little mini-project. Not anything really worth its own video, so I might as well squeeze it into this video. Boats deny fall damage for the player, but will that work for a villager? Let's see. Yep, he sounds still alive to me, so that's good. So, while I was going to grab blocks to uh, force this guy into this nether portal, I made an interesting discovery while listening to Minecraft videos on YouTube. Dirt and gravel can be used to make coarse dirt, and when you're done, this consumes the gravel and turns it into coarse dirt. The coarse dirt can then be hoed to make real dirt, and I have an infinite supply of gravel here, because I'm always mining it off the seabed along with an infinite gravel in the nether from piglet trading. This entire time, I could have had infinite dirt, and I just didn't realize it. Oh, that is so frustrating. I load into the nether, and it is filled with frogs. A lot of frogs made it in somehow. Don't you dare walk through that portal. A lot of frogs made it into the nether somehow. I think they used the nether portal themselves. I'm going to block off the portal to prevent the villager from returning from whence he came. And I'm going to boat him all the way over to my gold farm. I'm also going to kill these frogs because they are no value to me. Uh, Mr. Fuzzy is not here, but I'm sure he doesn't mind. I'm going to have to widen some of these doorways to get the boat through. I'm pretty much going to have to alter a couple of things the entire way to make sure it's a smooth journey. It has just occurred to me that it's probably not a good idea to record myself doing borderline vandalism and then put it on YouTube where as Mr. Fuzzy will watch it and then know what I did. So, I'll be putting as much of this stuff back as I can, but for now, you're just going to see me pop over to the pillbox where I need to drop off this villager through the power of video editing. Okay, we're over at the refurbished pillbox. I'm pretty certain that Mr. Fuzzy uses this pillbox as well, along with Majin JMac and anyone else who gets on this server. So it has been modified several times, but that's okay. Uh, these piglins are no longer aggroed on me. I was killing some of them to grab some gold to show you something, but it would appear that I'm perfectly safe now. Alrighty, since we're relatively safe and I don't hear a ghast, let's give you a tour of the pillbox. Of course, we have all these anti-ghast measures, that's the pillars and stuff. The entire thing is pretty much piglin-proof. The only zombie piglin that can get in is a baby chicken chalky zombie. And I have some flesh storage, some storage for scrap items, and all the items that are harvested are stored back here. Everything's got an iron door so the piglins can't walk through. You have infinite lava sources, you have a soul campfire, an anvil for repairing your tools. You pretty much have everything you need to theoretically survive here indefinitely if you need to. But I also added a downstairs, so let's go downstairs and see it. Alright, down here in the basement we have two piglins that have not been zombified who will gladly trade gold for various items. Their names are Hogman and Piggy Sue. We also have two villagers without names who will purchase rotten flesh. Remember when I said that I wish I could do something with the rotten flesh? Well, now we can. Because they're conveniently located in the nether, we can finally trade in rotten flesh. It finally has a functional purpose. And this guy buys raw pork chops, which are common in the nether. You most likely will not use that very often, but you will be buying food from him, so that's nice. All of the piglin trades, if they somehow end up in this contained space where you can't reach them, will end up here in this dispenser, and the piglins will not aggro on you just because you got into this dispenser. They would for a chest, but not for a dispenser. So you can constantly cycle through items here. Sometimes Piggy Sue and the Hogman like to throw their items outside of the general area to try and get them over to you, but for the most part you can pick it up without taking any damage, even if they're mad at you. I think one of them has a crossbow, though, so I would suggest you wear gold. 
And that is pretty much it for the pillbox project. I got the pillbox up and running, so it manufactures a lot more than gold. It now deals in piglin trades, emeralds, and food, which is great for surviving in the nether. I realize that other people use this to their advantage, but I'm okay with that. Alrighty, and it looks like that is the end of the video. The giant oil rig is now gone, replaced by a giant tower that frankly works a lot better and produces a whole lot more sulfur. We also got some new little bee buddies for the giant base, and we have a better pillbox in the nether for producing all kinds of wonderful items. I'm going to take a little bit of time to scrape up all this copper, and I sure would appreciate it if while I do this, you take some time to go ahead and hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. It helps me in my constant war with the YouTube algorithmo. As always, I appreciate your continued watching, and for now, I'm going to be saying bye-bye!